Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, O oh God. I give you glory and honor in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for sending your Son to purchase, to ransom us, to give us an opportunity to be free in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, as we're receiving revelation, knowledge, and understanding, that we're also figuring out how we are being conformed to the image of Christ. And those things that don't conform, we don't need. I pray, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your anointing fall in this place this evening, that deliverance will begin to manifest as the children's bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Turn with me to Mark 1 and 15 and 1 John 3 and 8. Mark 1 and 15 and the word declaring and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. 1 John 3 and 8, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. I want to preach to you this evening why we need deliverance. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them why we need deliverance. <laughs> Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom was at hand or is here. And he said to repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel which is the good news of the kingdom. And the good news of the kingdom was that the division, the separation that separated man from God was now going to be destroyed. Jesus was the mediator or the bridge between us and God. Adam sinned and Jesus brought us back. Amen. Hallelujah. The preaching of the gospel of the kingdom sets the captives free. And this morning we talked about salvation. We talked about the gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom has signs, wonders, and miracles. The gospel of the cross has salvation. The greatest miracle in your life is salvation coming into your life. That is a miracle bar none. For without that miracle, nobody is going to see heaven. Amen. But Jesus also came to break the bondage that was holding mankind. And that word is still in force today with the same power and authority to break the bondages of sin. In Matthew 8 and 16, the word declares, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. That word possessed means to be vexed or to be exercised by the desire of a devil. Amen. When the Bible talked about devils in the Bible, it was the word, they didn't use the word demon. It was the word demonizonai. And that word means devil, but it doesn't mean Lucifer. Amen. Because he is not all-knowing. He is not everywhere. But there are spirits that take on his identity, amen, that say they are a devil or the devil. In Matthew 10 and 1, the word says, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of, kinds of disease. Jesus, by the power of the kingdom, cast the devil out. Say that. Jesus cast the devil out. And so did his disciples. Amen. This is still a, a touchy subject in places. Amen. And it shouldn't be. Because one of the signs of the New Testament church was the casting out of devils. We as disciples have the same power and authority that the disciples had. We have the power to cast out devils. Why do we need deliverance? To fulfill the truth of the word of God for our lives and the kingdom of God. Salvation is deliverance from the power of Satan and sin. 
Amen. Jesus set us free with his death and the resurrection. And yet there are millions of Christians that are bound, deceived, and confused about their Christian life. Amen. That thing I was saying earlier about friends. Lots of Christians have friends. And I'm not talking about flesh and blood friends. I'm talking about demonic spiritual friends. That they have allowed into their lives. Amen. And that because they allow them into their lives, they are manifesting in their lives. Amen. And manifesting means what? Showing out. Amen. People manifest and show out all the time. Amen. The millions that are confused and are bound are sitting up in churches. They're sitting up in churches because they're not hearing the full counsel of God. They're not hearing the areas where the Lord is saying that those that believe in his name can cast out demons. Amen. There are a lot of churches that don't believe you've got to deal with a demon. Whether you're casting them out or you've got some in your life. Amen. And that, that's automatically a safe haven for the devil because if you don't believe, his greatest lie is to convince people that he don't exist. He can do whatever he wants to do then because you will accredit it to human error. You'll accredit it to uh, the mental state of people. But you won't give the devil credit where it's due. And he don't mind because his whole purpose is to destroy you. And if you can't recognize who's trying to destroy you, you can't fight it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people think they have to live with that bondage and torment. But they're being held in bondage by past sin that gave place to demons. Amen. That's why we need deliverance. To be able to break free from the things that have entered into our lives that don't seem, that we don't seem to have authority over. Have you ever had something operating in your life and it seems like just good Christian living could not get it out of your life? It, it, it just seems like it was just consuming you? Amen. Amen? Then you might have some friends of the invisible nature. Amen. Amen. They belong to another kingdom that is trying to hinder and block you from growing into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. This is, this is an a, a, a issue with the body of Christ. I've talked to people that said, oh, yeah, back in the late 70s, we dealt with demons, and we got through with that. How, how do you get through with something that you can't kill? Amen. How do you get through with something that there is no place in the Word of God that says they're dead? Amen. The Bible speaks of um, fallen angels, a number that could not be numbered. And one-third of that number fell, but they all did not become demons. Look at your neighbor and tell them they did not all become demons. Some of them are locked up and bound up, chained up, and cannot move until the Lord re releases the judgment. But some of them are operating as spirits that come to torment. And yet there are other spirits called imps that were a pre-Adamic race that the Lord judged and left them in the earth. Amen. I don't believe angels. Angels that are demonic angels are no longer angels. Because angels have a body. Demons don't have any. Angels, angels have a body. Demons don't have bodies. Amen. They're looking for areas to come into your life. They've entered our lives. And now as we're trying to live a Christian life, these areas are not submitting themselves to good Christian discipline. There are areas such as lustful desires, porno, fornication, adultery, addictions, rejection, depression, rebellion, attitudes that cause us to sin against ourselves or to sin against each other. Amen. Some of those things we commonly call sins of the flesh. Amen. Look at Galatians 5, 20 and 21. I understand this. When we talk about sins of the flesh, sins of the flesh are the areas where demons want to get in at. 
They don't want your spiritual life. They want your fleshly life. In Galatians, the fifth chapter, it says idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and of the like of which I tell you before, just as I have told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Apostle Paul isn't talking to sinners. He's talking to saints. Sometimes these things will operate in the lives of saints, saved, sanctified, spirit-filled people that are operating in these areas because they allow their flesh to dictate how they act, how, how they're emotionally operating. When you do those things, you allow doorways to open for the enemy to come in and begin to possess those areas in your life. And when I'm saying possess, they don't take over. They influence. Amen. Amen. It's like that old cartoon you used to see where there was an a angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. Their influence is to say something that will cause your flesh to react. To react. And then when you begin to react, not in a righteous manner, but an unrighteous manner, you are now strengthening the hand of the enemy. Somebody say amen. See, I know you know some of these things, so this is something that I have to release in the, into the air. Amen. But there are also some of these things you don't know. Amen. amen. These are the areas where evil and sin flourishes. Evil and sin desires to flourish in our lives. But Jesus has come to set us free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. But you've got a desire to be free. Amen. See, some of these areas that we've entered into were the things that we did before we were saved. And these are some of the things that we're still doing now that we are saved. Amen, lights. See, the only way you uncover the devil is to uncover him. He loves darkness. Amen. And what you say, well, this doesn't affect me. Uh, apostles preaching that word, but psh, I've been delivered from that kind of stuff. I, I, I've been set free. Have you? Amen. Amen. Little quirks of character and little things where the enemy causes you not to walk into the right relationship of the Lord God Almighty. You don't walk in right relationship. You don't show love for one another. Amen. That's not God. That's the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Some of those things we're still doing because we haven't been delivered. Amen. We can know we're wrong, but we don't have enough power to break ourselves free from being wrong. And as long as you listen to your emotions, you'll stay wrong. Amen. The word of the Lord says we walk by faith, not by sight. We're not led by the flesh. We're led by the spirit. There are some things we just flat out need to ask the Spirit of God. Is this you? Amen. There are some areas of pride that we begin to allow pride to lead us. We don't ask God. Amen. We just think we know. Amen. And pride cometh before the fall. You don't even know you're fallen. Amen. Hey Amen. You just look up and you're on the floor. Amen. And don't know how you've gotten there. Amen. Amen. See, when we know that we're wrong and we don't have enough power to break free, we haven't fallen out of agreement with sin or the devil. Amen. See, we can be in sin, in agreement with the devil, and then not be a major sin, but it's a sin that's like a cancer. It's eroding your spiritual walk. It's finding a way to get into deeper places within you. This is why we need deliverance. Amen. Because Satan still has a hold on our lives. The day of salvation was a new beginning. We became brand new from the neck down. Amen. We became new creatures, new creations. God didn't say anything about your head. He didn't say anything about your mind. He said, behold, all things are new. Can you say second chance? Second chance. God gave us a second chance but he also gave us some of the responsibility. And some of the responsibility for our new birth was to get our minds in order. Amen. Amen. That word in 2 Corinthians 
the fifth chapter talks about the new creation, a new you. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But what you do with your head determines whether or not you mature. Amen. Amen. Whether or not you move to the next level that God has ordained you to move into. Amen. The work begins to renew our minds because as believers, we have the power and the authority to cast out demons Amen. and to have dem demons cast out of us. That's where the rub, the trouble starts, to have demons cast out of us. We have heard so many erroneous messages, so many erroneous theories that say demons can't be in a Christian. Amen. Why sweet and bitter water cannot flow out of the same orifice. Amen. The devil is a liar and so is religion. Amen. I know it's been said. And it's been preached, it's impossible for a Christian to have a demon. But I want to make this perfectly clear. Amen. Amen. You can have whatever you want, and you have had whatever you want. Amen. We have had whatever we wanted. Amen. Amen. And some of the things that we desired and some of the things that we, we had have created in us avenues, doorways, and openings for the enemy to get in our lives. Amen. Amen. We have to understand and know without a shadow of a doubt that the enemy wants to get in our lives. Amen. We did our own thing. Amen. Think back. You remember when you did your own thing? You did whatever you wanted to do and whatever anybody else was doing, you did it too. That is what caused us to get some friends of the spiritual nature. That's what allowed us to begin to move in an area that caused us to help the enemy. Because when we didn't know no better, that's what happened. Amen. Yet, it opened doors for demons. Demons themselves are disembodied spirits. Amen. Amen. Don't let anybody tell you a Christian can't have a demon. Amen. How many have heard that? Amen. Amen. It sounded good when it was preached, didn't it? But it didn't explain how come you cut up, you clown. Amen. You've done some things that Christians don't do, but you're still saved. Amen. The love of God isn't shed abroad in your heart because you got offense, unforgiveness, anger, bitterness. You picked up a demon. Now you're wondering, is it just me? What is it? You got company. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got company. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. I listen to those people preach that crazy stuff, and they're like, a Christian can't have a demon? Then how do you explain all the stupid stuff we be doing? It's sin, and we're trying to say it's not sin. At least put the blame where it belongs. You got a demon. You got something operating in you trying to shame God and cause you to miss heaven. That's their whole purpose. For this reason was the Son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. The devil has had all the life of men to figure out how to trick men, how to deceive men. He started with Adam. He hasn't quit. Amen. Amen. We're still doing all of the stuff that causes him to be able to get into our lives. Amen? Demons are disembodied spirits. They don't have a body. They need your body. Look at your neighbor and tell them they need you. They just got to figure out a way to get into you. They got to figure out a way to find out if you're what they're looking for. They're looking for a home or a host. See, it's amazing to me. We are so hung up in this ghost business. A ghost is a demon. Amen. Amen. He doesn't have a body. He's a demon. And all he wants to do is create fear in you or entertain you. Because if he entertains you and you say he's a ghost, then you don't recognize he's a demon. Amen. 
The definition of demon, a demon is an evil spirit, a source or an agent of evil that causes harm, distress, vexation, and ruin. And the definition in the uh, dictionary says it's usually a demon, spelled daemon, D-A-E-M-O-N, but it's still a demon. Amen. In Matthew 12, 43, 44, the word of the Lord says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through the dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will turn to my house, which he believes is your body, from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. The house he's speaking of is a human body, a human being. They need people because they have characteristics of evil desires which are unclean and evil and that can be only fulfilled in a body. So they've got to find a body <clears throat> that is willing to do what it wants to do. Hear this. The devil can't make you do anything. Amen. Flip Wilson was wrong. Amen. Amen. The devil don't make me do that. A demon that is a demon of addiction has to look for someone that has something in their life that they're addicted to. An alcoholic spirit has to find somebody that wants to get drunk. A lustful spirit has to find somebody that wants to fornicate. Amen. Because that's its desire. A spirit of alcohol can't come upon you if you don't drink. <clears throat> that spirit of alcohol has to find someone who loves alcohol. Someone who has resigned themselves that they want to get their head bad every weekend. Now that spirit is looking for somebody who is going to be in agreement with what they want to do. And that will cause them to, to drink and consume unexplainable amounts of liquor and keep functioning. Amen? But de that's what demons are looking for. Demons need flesh and blood people in order to manifest or to show out. They seek humans to do their work. Amen? People used to teach, well, you got to be careful. A spirit will jump on you. Spirit can't jump on you if you don't have anything in it. Jesus said the devil comes and he has nothing in me, didn't he? He wasn't running from the devil. He just said, I'm not going to waste my time. He's coming, but he ain't got no hope here. Amen. I've got all the hatches batting down. I'm good. I'm covered in the blood. I'm not going anywhere. So he's not going to come and be able to do anything in my life. Amen? We need to understand and know that there are areas in our lives that we still need to be delivered from. Amen. There are little quirks <clears throat> in our character. We get angry and sin. Amen. But Ephesians 4 and 26 says what? It says, be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Y'all just look straight ahead at me right now. Nobody's going to know I'm, I'm getting ready to target you. See, you can get mad and be, day, be mad for a day, two hours, a week, a month, a year. What, what pushes your button that happened 10 years ago and you still mad? Guess what? You got a demon. Amen? That word says, be angry and sin not. How long have you been mad? How long have you been in unforgiveness? How long have you been holding somebody up because you're angry with them? You can be angry but get over it. Look at your neighbor and tell them, get over it. When you're angry to the point of sinning, you pick up a demon. Amen. Most people pick it up overnight. Something happened last night and you toss and turn all night planning what's going to happen in the morning. You didn't sleep. You've been plotting all night. The devil's just been having a heyday. You get up in the morning 
and you're looking for a victim. Whoever you had a disagreement with last night, they're at peace. Now. I mean, they slept like a baby. The little Serta lambs was leaping over their bed, and they was just counting them left and right. <clears throat> but you wake up in the morning loaded for bear. And then you pounce on them, rip them apart. And they're like, what happened? They got over their anger. You didn't. You picked up a demon. Now you're justified. Ooh, it's getting quiet in here. I just told you, look at me. I, I didn't tell you to get convicted. Now the Holy Ghost begins to speak to you, because I'm not talking about unsaved people. I'm talking about saved people. The Holy Ghost begins to speak to you, and now you've got too much pride to say, I'm sorry. Thank you, brother. You got too much pride to go back and undo the foolishness that you did when you were angry. But you didn't get rid of that demon. Repenting doesn't get rid of that demon. You got to recognize. See, some, lots of times people are unaware that they have been subject to the enemy. Amen. We can open doors or entrance ways for spirits to enter our lives. Amen. Because we were angry. That word says, be angry and sin not. You cannot uh, uh, interpret this any other way than what those two verses say. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place. What that says is when you get angry, Satan is looking to come in. He's got his bags. Amen. Amen his backpack and his abachi. And he's getting ready to come in, move into your house, and start cooking. And your anger, your emotional state was so high, you didn't even hear him moving in. But you're angry. I love the fact they're talking to Christians here. Amen. Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, And these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. And they will speak with new tongues. That new tongues, I don't believe, is the interpretation of speaking in other tongues. I believe that means that they begin to speak the commandments of God that allow you to cast out demons. You're no longer saying those things that you used to say. I'm just so sick and tired of people. I'm just so sick and tired of this job. I, I, oh, take me home, Lord Jesus. We say crazy things. Not understanding we can have the power to ha cause that thing to happen because the word of the Lord says, and um, I believe Proverbs 18 says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and you shall eat the fruit thereof. But the word of the Lord also says that your words should be sweet to the ears of those who hear them. We say a lot of stuff that isn't sweet. And then we're wondering, why does it come to pass? In Luke 10, 19, the word of the Lord said, Behold, I give you power. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have been given power. We've been given authority to break people free from the power of the enemy. Amen. Yet people have to want to get free from the enemy. Sometimes people don't want to get free. They're afraid of what they'll be. People used to tell us all the time, if we get this cast out of our lives, who will we be? Amen. A new creation, a new creature in the eyesight of God. He's getting ready to work with you. Because the only reason the devil is in your life is to keep you from progressing and maturing in the things of God. That's his whole purpose. Amen? That's why he wants entrance into our lives. But you've got to want deliverance. People have to be sick and tired of the way they're living. Sick and tired of the way they're operating. Amen? Amen? Because until you get sick and tired, you won't break agreement. Amen. You know? It, any habit, any addiction, anything that's operating in your life, you will not break that until you get tired of that. Amen? You can't keep feeding what you say you don't want to operate in. Amen. amen. People need to be rescued. Amen. People need to be sick and tired of what the devil is doing to them and begin to seek deliverance. Seek to be rescued from whatever is tormenting and vexing them. Amen. What is the definition of sin? That that is 
pleasurable for a season, along with missing a mark. Sin is only pleasurable for a season. How long is the season? Till you get a revelation that you've been captured. Till you get a revelation that this is out of control. Till you get a revelation that this thing is bigger than me. Amen. Amen. Sin is only pleasurable for a season, and after that season, it becomes torment and a bondage. When it becomes a torment and a bondage, then people are, how do I escape this? How do I get out? It, it's sort of like drug addiction. Once you finally recognize what drug addiction is, then you try to get away from it, and you find out it's got you. Then you need help. You need strength. You need the power. You need the promises of the Lord to break you free. But nothing will help you until you desire to get free. Amen? It's lost its appeal. <laughs> Look at the word of God. The first place that you have to go in order to get free is you've got to renew your mind. Amen? Romans 12, 1 and 2. When we begin to understand about renewing our mind, we have to begin to understand it. Because you're a born-again Christian, you need to operate differently than you used to operate. You can't operate in the same manner you used to operate in. The manner you used to operate in was ungodly. It was worldly. It was sinful. It was unclean. Amen? Now you're a new creation, a new creature. Now you're studying to be a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you've got to think differently. Amen? You can't think about people the way you used to think about people. You can't think about yourself the way you used to think about yourself. It's all about number one. It's all about me. No, when you become a child of the king, it can't be about you anymore. It's about all of us. The word of the Lord said it's more blessed to give than it is received. You got to be releasing. Amen. You got to learn how to cut people some slack. Amen. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Can you say, I've been bought with a price? My life is not my own. That's what this verse is saying. You have to submit yourself to the lordship of Jesus Christ because it is by the tender mercies of God that you are still here. Amen. Amen. Not because you've been so good. Not because you are so special. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's not all about you. Ooh, that'll break some stuff up right there. Amen. Amen. Because we desire to believe it's all about us, and it's not. Thank you, Lord. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. You have to begin to allow your mind to change. Some things that you've been banking on, some things that you lived and placed your life upon, you got to begin to change them things. Amen. you got, you got to begin to walk in the love of God. You've got to begin to change your mind. You can't begin to write people off because they offended you. Amen, lights. Amen. See, I used to be one of those people. You were good until you crossed me. And if you crossed me, I didn't need you. Amen. I, mean, I, I remember the first time I said this, I, the, the people in the congregation were like, huh? said, once I wrote you off, if you were in the street fighting with a bear, I'd help the bear. In between rounds, I'd be fanning him. Keep your left up, champ. Keep your left up. Keep that jab in his nose. And the Lord got me. He got me. He said, who are you to hold a grudge? Who are you not to love my people? I was like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't look at them as his people. I just looked at them as vermin. <laughs> Amen. You crossed me. I gave you my best, and you abused me. So the Lord had to show me who did I think I was, that I couldn't be crossed, that I, I couldn't be done wrong. See, that was, the, that was what was incorporated in me. Love everybody. Love all people, all races, all nations, until they do something to you. After that, mark that person off. 
That person no longer is your friend. That person is no longer within your uh, realm. Amen. And I learned to do that. I would mark you off. I might know you, but we're done. And God had to begin to bring me to that point that I could not mark them off because no matter what they did, they were still had a value. They still could be a child of the king. They still were a child of the king. So I, I had to get by that. Amen. I didn't have to do nothing to you as long as you didn't touch me. But as far as just me and you, it would not be me and you anymore. Amen. You had your space. I had my space. My space didn't have to come near your space. How many know that was wrong? How many know God said you are not going to live? You, are, you cannot fulfill what I called you to fulfill acting like that. Amen. Amen. I wasn't perfect. I had some things God had to work on me in. I'm not perfect yet. He's still working. What about you? Amen. Amen. We're, none of us are going to be perfect. The day you become perfect is the day you'll no longer walk the earth. Because you're under construction. The key is, are you willing to allow God to build the man or the woman of God that he's ordained you to be? Or do you think you've already arrived? If you think you've already arrived, you are deceived. You are fooled. Amen. Amen. Because you have cut yourself off from God. Amen. We need to seek the Lord with all our hearts. We need to renew our mind from the way of the world to the way of God. God's way is different than the world. The world says it's all about number one. God said it's about somebody else. Amen. We need to seek the Lord with all our hearts and to submit every area of our life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote these words by the Spirit of God in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Amen. On how we are to live. And if any of these things are in your life and you can control them, you need deliverance. Beginning in the 22nd verse, it says that you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore putting away lying, let each of one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good, that he, he may have something to give him who has a need. It's not all about you. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. That's how we are to live. That isn't how the world lives. Amen. All of this bumps heads with the world because the world doesn't live that way. These are the ways in which we are to live and we should be living. Jesus Christ died so that we could be delivered from the power of Satan. But we have to choose to live by the word of God, not by our wisdom, not by what we feel. We have to make choices to live better because we know better. Amen. My sister-in-law used to say that all the time. When we know better, we should do better. When we know better and know how to live according to the word of God, then we need to do better. Amen. We can't live in our own world. We can't just live and do the things that we want to do and not suffer the consequences. Amen. Deliverance belongs to the saved. Tell your neighbor, deliverance belongs to the saved. The called out ones. But you got to choose to be free. Amen. Deliverance will change your life. Hallelujah. Put your notes down. We're going to make a declaration and a confession. Amen. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your blood that has the power to break the bondage created by sin. 
I repent and I close every door that has been open to the kingdom of darkness in my life. I thank you for setting me free from the power of Satan and his demonic forces. I thank you, Lord, that today I choose to honor and obey you and your word. I break all agreements with devils. I am not in agreement, no way, and no how. I command them to leave me alone. I command them in the name of Jesus Christ to go. I cast you out. I break all generational curses of pride, rebellion, lust, poverty, witchcraft, death, destruction, failure, sickness, infirmity, fear, schizophrenia, rejection in the name of Jesus. I command all generational and hereditary spirits operating in my life through curses to be bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of lust, perversion, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, immorality to come out of my sexual character in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of hurt, rejection, fear, anger, wrath, sadness, depression, discouragement, grief, bitterness, and unforgiveness to come out of my emotions now in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of confusion, forgetfulness, mind control, mental illness, double-mindedness, fantasy, pain, pride, memory recall, to come out of my mind in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of schizophrenia and command all spirits of double-mindedness, rejection, Rebellion, root of bitterness, come up and all the way out in the name of Jesus. I command all the spirits of guilt, shame, condemnation to come out of my conscience in the name of Jesus. I command all the spirits of addiction to come out of my appetites in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and the occult to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my head, my eyes, my mouth, my tongue, and my throat to come out in Jesus' name. I command all spirits operating in my chest and lungs to come out now in the name of Jesus. All the spirits of infirmity operating in my back, my spine, in my stomach, navel, abdomen, my heart, my spleen, my kidneys, my liver, and my pancreas to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of infirmity operating in my sexual organs, my reproduction organs, my hands, my arms, my legs, and my feet to come out in the name of Jesus. Every demon of infirmity 
operating in my skeletal system, in my bones, my joints, my knees, my hips, and my elbows, and my ankles. In the name of Jesus, come out now. I command all the spirits of infirmity operating in my glands and in my um, indoctrine systems. I command all spirits operating in my blood and the circulatory systems in my body come out right now. I command all the spirits operating in my muscles and my muscular systems to come out right now. All of you spirits operating in my body that seem that they can't be found by doctors. Pains, illnesses, ailments, all of you go right now. I command all religious spirits of doubt Unbelief, religious error, heresy, and traditions that came through religion come out now in the name of Jesus. I command all the spirits of my past that are hindering my present and blocking my future come out in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral spirits that entered through my ancestors the release curses in my life I break up the curses and I command you to go I command all the hidden spirits hiding in any part of my life to be exposed to be cast out and to go Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Help me to grow into your will in your way. Father, I ask you, restore to me all the lost time that the devil has stolen in my life. In the name of Jesus, this I pray. And I decree and declare, amen, amen. And amen. Give God glory. There's power in what you say. Amen. There's power when we begin to decree and declare the word of God and the promises of God in our lives. Sometimes you just need to decree and declare these kind of things to clear the air. Amen. Just to make sure the devil knows you know the word of God and you're standing in the place that God has ordained you to be in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Take a deep breath. Amen. You lose a lot of stuff just by doing that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone that needs prayer?